Welcome back to Off the Court. Before we introduce our next guest, I want to take a moment to thank all of the amazing people who have made the first episode so, such a success. Maddie, Megan, and Justin, thank you so much. And obviously the fans, we're up to 1,700 views on Instagram. You guys are amazing. I always say that you guys are the best part of NC State and you have not let me down, so thank you again. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce the counterpart to our senior duo, <laughs> one of my... <laughs> close friends, and one of the funniest people I know. Welcome to Off the Court, KJ. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here, and I can't wait for you guys to learn a little bit more about me. Yeah, I mean, I think this is something that the fans miss out on a little bit. They don't have the chance to really get to know us outside of basketball, and that's why I thought this would be a great opportunity, because we don't have any basketball to watch, so might as well fill it with something else. For sure, for sure. Most definitely. So, this week has been crazy. I know on campus there's been a lot of um, action going on around racial, racial injustice, and you were a big part of some of the things happening. And I know that we're all super interested in what has been happening on campus, what have you been a part of, and uh, we have some questions from fans about it also, but I just wanna get kind of a statement from you first about what's happening on campus, how you're seeing things change, and what you think needs to be better. Um, well, you know the statement that I put out on Instagram. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen that. But uh, it was just for to hold the organization, not just uh, athletics, but NC State as a whole accountable to the movement. You know, every other organization basically was a part of it. So I was like, the school I played for could at least promote what was going on. So, but other than that, like me and Jada, we've been a part of the um, on-campus uh, uh, thing that was going on. And then we went downtown and protested down there. So it was just amazing all the way around. And did you see like a lot of, um, cause I w wasn't able to be there, but with everybody showing up, did you see a lot of like interest and in, like from a bunch of different people? I know the athletes were there, but it looked like there was a bunch of other people. What uh, it, type of it was honestly uh, a bunch protest of was it? Yeah, it was a lot of students that was on the camp on campus one. More, it was more students than athletes, honestly. But we had football there. Uh, Isaiah, he was the coordinator coordinator of it of it all. So, and then downtown, me, Isaiah, Jada, Lisa, we all went down, and JB, and went down and just congregated with just other people, and it was amazing. Like that was the best feeling ever. I promise. Just being around other people and seeing how engaged they were with the movement, it was just amazing. I bet. I wish I could have been there. I was watching it all like so happy and yeah. um, it sucks being far away, but I'm glad that it's happening. It definitely needed to. Right. Um, so we have a question from Maria Santor off of Twitter and she wants to know um, what people can do to make a difference in small ways without being out there protesting, without being able to be there with you. How can they make a difference? Um, honestly, at first I was hesitant about going out protesting because of the coronavirus, of course. So I've been keeping up with Michaela Boykin from Duke and mainly just signing the petitions, like being aware of what's going on, using your, your uh, platform, if that's Twitter, Instagram, and just posting different things to inform others. And that's kind of what I was talking to about Coach Nate. Like he said, he's really trying to just post on his Twitter to inform others that he might can reach, you know? So mm -hmm. that's mainly it really. Yeah, I think, and that's like a super easy way to like continue the conversation beyond what's happening on the streets. Well, off the heavy stuff and into kind of the lighter things, what are you doing in quarantine to stay busy? We're all trying to figure it out. So how are you keeping fit, staying busy, and keeping yourself from going a little bit stir crazy? Yeah. Uh, so honestly, you wouldn't believe this, Ace. I'm trying to learn how to cook. That's my main thing. I'm trying to learn how to cook, and I'm kind of struggling, you know? <laughs> I got JB here now to help, but other than that, I usually play the game. Uh, we hang out together, me, her, and Jada. And uh, that's about it, really. And Hold up, what are you cooking? Oh, you know, the easy stuff, like breakfast, <laughs> uh, maybe some pastas. But other than that, I really don't know how to cook. The meats, I really don't know because I'm, like, touching it. That's kind of weird. But, you know, I'm, like, a germ freak. And that's disgusting. It feels nasty, cringy. <laughs> so I'm kind of struggling on that part. So we'll see. But, other than but that, that's I'll awesome. Cook. Yeah, that's kind of the main thing. It's just resting, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's probably good for our bodies right right we yeah. go non-stop all year round yeah and then like with all this going around what well, going on like the racism and corona it's been mentally draining uh with schoolwork also because you know we still in summer school 
Yeah. So I was kind of just trying to focus on, focus on school and then just do the things I could do, like free time, whatever. What are you doing to like stay in a good, healthy mental state? Like I know, cause I know that everybody's kind of in that zone where it's like, there's a new crappy thing happening yeah. every other day. So how are you kind of taking care of your mental health? Um, well, some days I take a little break from social media, but mainly for me, the thing I get peace from is just like watching YouTube videos. It could be like a sermon or something. And now mm -hmm. I just started this book I'm reading um, from Michael Todd, Pastor Michael Todd, uh, mm -hmm. Relationship Goals. So yeah. that's kind of how I'm keeping my peace. Just going to something other than what's going on in the world, just separating myself. Yeah, I think that's a little bit important. Like it's important to have that action, but it's also good to take a step back and breathe a little bit. Yeah. Um, so now kind of into high school, you had an amazing high school career. And the first thing we're going to talk about is your 50 point game. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. Like, what do you remember? Who were you playing? What was the feeling? Like, I'm I'm pretty sure that's your highest point game, right? Yeah, that's the highest. I, honestly, I don't remember the team we were playing. I think it was Southside. Mm -hmm. Southside Seahawks I'm not sure but I don't know it just seemed like my coach said like I had to go for it and this is kind of crazy Michaela probably laughed at this but I think Michaela had dropped like 50 some or 60 some and he was like yo you gotta get a 50 point game your girl got one you have to get one so I was like all right let's do it <laughs> I'm really past first type of person so he was like yeah. I want you to shoot this game and my teammates were for it so that's kind of how that game went that's awesome I mean that's funny that you and Michaela were kind of like in like a little competition with that. Yeah, I promise she wouldn't even know. Like if I show her this, she can be like, wow. So that's why you got your 50 point. Game. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Because Michaela dropped like 60 some months. So I was like, oh, heck no. I got to get something too. Well, we're going to need you to beat that this season. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's my challenge to you. I want 51. That's kind of tough. Hey, I'm not even going to hold you to ACC. Yes. <laughs> I want 51 and... I'm going to say right now, you're going to dedicate it to me because I challenged you. Go ahead and put it in the atmosphere. <laughs> um, okay. And then from your biggest high to kind of probably your lowest low in high school, you hurt your knee. I don't mm -hmm. think lots of people know this because, you know, you put so much effort into getting your body ready and training and doing that. And you don't show a lot of pain or um, anything holding you back on the court. But, you know, I'm always in there with you right. in the training room and you're always getting rehab. So um, take us through kind of like what happened with your knee, how you rehabbed it back, how you overcame it, and kind of how it changed your perspective on taking care of your body. Well, it was my junior year at the high school OT up here in Raleigh. And I told me I was going for a layup. So I went down on it. I don't even think I went up, honestly. It just like went in. And the girl was beside me. They thought it was contact, but she barely touched me. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. Uh, how I handled, handled it, uh, it was okay. I'm not going to hold you. I got a little depressed through it, through the stage of it. But I knew that I was, it was going to my senior year. I was going to eventually come to state. So I knew I had to do some type of work, you know, to get back to where I would like to be. And it never was. Like freshman year, I was not ready, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I just used that year to dedicate it to uh, improving my body. And then sophomore year, you know, played a little bit more, you know, it's like... <laughs> Well, other than that, that was about it. I mean, it just took a lot of time with Cassie for sure. And I thank her and Coach Nate for believing in me, um, trusting in me, and just pushing me to be the best player I could be. Yeah. I mean, I definitely understand that when I broke my foot, I had never had a major injury in my life. Like that was the first time I had ever broken a bone or anything. And that kind of um, depression you're kind of talking about where it's, you're upset, but you don't really know how to like vent it. Cause usually you take the sports as a way to like get through your emotion and you couldn't right. do that. So I definitely understand what you're saying about um, you go into a little bit of depression, but you still got to work through it. Yeah. Um, and then, so last year you had your jersey retired. Oh yeah, that was amazing. That is an amazing thing. Tell, <laughs> tell us a little bit about how that went about. Like, honestly, I found out that you were getting your jersey retired through Twitter after it was like already happening. <laughs> Cause you didn't tell any of us. You just I like, know, I was like, ah. I didn't know. I was like, regardless, you guys want to come in. It was so far away. And Jada. I know, but like, we would have like celebrated for you or something, but you like totally like just like snuck off and did it. And then we were all on Twitter. Oh, like, real low key. I don't know. <laughs> you was getting her jersey retired? He was like, you didn't even tell me, KJ. I'm like, what a kid. I'm like, I'm sorry. 
know, yeah, so tell us a little bit about that because we didn't get to experience it. Oh, um, it was amazing. You know, they played, it was uh, Riverside versus Plymouth High School, Washington County High School. And basically my dad went to Washington County High School where it was called Plymouth High. And mm -hmm. then I obviously played at Riverside. So it was just like family from both sides there, which was the perfect game to recognize me for that. So it was amazing. It was a great atmosphere. And they surprised me, honestly, because my coach had called my mom and said, like, we were going to retire Kayla Jersey. At first, they weren't going to tell me, but uh -huh. they needed me to come home. So they had to tell me. So uh, he told me I was just, a, like, shocked, screaming, like, thank you, thank you, like, just amazed. Because it was awesome. great people who came through there, like Jalen Brown, um, who else? Deja Moore. It was just mm -hmm. Taquana. I just feel like anybody could have really had their jersey retired. And for them to choose me, it was just a blessing for sure. I know. And you, I mean, you definitely deserve it with everything you went through. So um, now moving on to your commitment to NC State, who was recruiting you before? Like, who did the choices come down to? Because I know you did, uh, like Kai, you had committed before I was even recruited. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, who were you being recruited by? And, like, why did you end up choosing NC State? Uh, I had plenty of letters for sure I don't know if they were ever offers but like letters you yeah, had like South Carolina you know Carolina really never recruited me wow I know it's crazy right <laughs> uh Duke never really recruited me uh who else I had Louisville letters uh Clemson there was, was a lot of ACC schools and then yeah. other schools also but honestly I was so shy as a person at the age I didn't want to talk to no coach like if I didn't feel comfortable I was not calling my mommy used to be like call I would just fill out the little forms that's it and send it back but I never <laughs> would call and you know because I don't like that I don't like talking at least I've grown though you know yes, but, you but, have. Uh, coach Nikki was my the person who was recruiting me and I kind of fell and like I just loved her as a person and then like the girls who were here because I already had Kayla and Dee Dee Rogers here who I play AU with so mm -hmm. that kind of played a big part into the choice also. Yeah, and I mean, you had like a super special relationship with Coach Nikki. Like we were all, you yeah. guys were like mother-daughter, like, but also like kind of like sisters. And we were all sitting there like kind of afraid of her because she always had that voice. Like, what? I don't know. We were all kind of afraid of her because, you know, she was like the mama bear and she would For put real. you in place. But you and her were so cool. We were always so confused by that. We were like, why isn't she more scared of her? Right. Nah, she was cool with me. Yeah, that's how awesome. she would scare me. You know, Coach Nikki eyes, they like fierce. Oh, yeah. She, no. And she does that little eyebrow thing and you're like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, shrink into your... Yes, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we were so close. I would go sit in her office sometime, like by the end of the season. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah, that was awesome. So we have a question from Justin Cook off of Twitter. He wants to know, besides Reynolds, what's your favorite venue to play at? Louisville. That was amazing. Even though we lost, like, OD, that was the – that atmosphere was crazy. It was so – Yum Center so pretty crazy. Fans. And, like, I don't know. It was just crazy. Like, when it was an Asia nerd, like, <laughs> score, score, like, every three. It was just – I, I tried to like, block that game out of my <laughs> – Same, because – they showed that highlight her scoring a three on me every single time when she got drafted. But yeah, it was amazing. I, I she still got shown on TV, so I mean. Yeah, 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 facts. Trying to block a shot, nowhere near. Okay, then we have another one from Dwayne Lanier. He uh, wants to know how the team built such a good culture together because he, they, you know, that's something that commentators and everybody really talked about us this season, that we really loved each other. And I wanted to give you a chance to – kind of explain how we built that culture because I know we've I always it. been really good but it was like special this year yeah it was um I don't know I feel like we really bought into it you know like we we died in and said like we're sisters like coach Aaron would always say like pick your sister up we really bought into that statement and I don't know we, we didn't care who was the main person that night the main girl uh we just wanted to win and that was our main focus like I told coach Moore like our main focus was we won the ACC ACC championship and we got it you know and, of course, we wanted a regular season. Yeah. kind of sucks. Anyway, we're not worried about it. We got a bigger one. I know. We got right. the big trophy. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then, of course, we wanted to play in the NCAA. But, I don't know. This one really did feel special because everyone genuinely loved each other. It was, it was just amazing. It was an amazing feeling. I told them, like, this was my best year, not just because of the ACC championship, but our bond off and on the court. 
yeah i think that like it was super weird we didn't really change anything but all of a sudden the chemistry on the team was just out of this world like we knew where everybody was gonna be um we knew how to play with each other how to feed each other the proper way and i just it was super special to be a part. Like I have a little bit of chills right now, like the yeah. ACC championship. Yeah. And everything. It was amazing this year. It was. So uh, something that, you know, you're very outspoken with and um, really like to talk about is your faith. I mean, even your shirt right now. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> is <laughs> tied in. So, you know, how does your faith play a role in, your confidence on the court and your confidence as a person and like being able to come out and play your hardest. Um, Cause we've never really had that conversation about yeah. that, but I do know it plays a huge role for you. So I would be really interested in hearing like how that helps shape the way you play and your everyday life. Um, I don't know. I feel like my faith is what got me to the point I am now as in freshman year. Not a lot of people know, like, of course, well, you know, I did not play, but I struggled mentally freshman year, like it was terrible. But my faith, I promise you, that is what got me from sophomore year to junior year to complete all of those seasons. Cause there's no way I could have done it without him. Um, it's, people don't know basketball at this level is draining mentally, it's tough. And you have to be mentally strong. And um, I would say like bots, taking time away from it and just getting into like God's word was the way I could find something other than basketball is a different piece, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like my confidence, I just believe that all things work together for my good. Like I'm a, like I'm a firm believer on that. So anything that happens bad, I still believe God can still work it out for my good. So I don't know. That's kind of how I move and believe in things. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's good to have that balance, like not, <laughs> not needing to feel like it's all on you all the time. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's kind of how I feel. It's just, it has helped me a lot as a person, it helped me grow, grow and then all on and off the court for sure. Especially all. I'm trying to yeah. work my patience, Ace. I'll just, <laughs> I'm trying. That's one struggle that I have, my patience, because my attitude sometimes trash. You are the only person brave enough. I still, like, my favorite story ever is when you called Coach Moore boo when he was yelling at you. Like, <laughs> you, were, I, you were like, I don't know. I okay, like, boo. Okay, I got you, boo. And we were like, <laughs> like, that is some goof, serious like, confidence right there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like we should laugh more. It's going to be so serious. I was like, when he yelled at me, I was like, I got you. Like, okay. I really got you. I mean, I think that was super important. Like, you were kind of like his, like, person who was like, okay, calm down. Like, you need to, yeah. you need to move on. And that's one of my favorite stories from this year the whole time. <laughs> okay, so um, Lily Bird wants to know, before we jump into the stuff about senior year, she wants to know, do you have any predictions? About what? About, about year? next year, this next season. Do, is it an ACC repeat? Oh, of course, you got to believe in yourself, you know, of course, yeah. that's, that's, that's got to happen. Um, I feel like who we get, who we have coming in, you got Jada Boyd coming back, and that's going to be a big one. Then you have Camille. Those the two are really ready to see what they bring, you know. I know what JB could do, because we already seen it in, like, the Louisville, Georgia Tech. But Camille, we seen just a peak, a little, a little something of Camille, Georgia Tech, you know. And yeah. I just, I cannot wait. Like, I'm really ready for next year. And then you have Elisa, Kai, uh, Jakia. And then you have a freshman coming in. And then we have a new girl, Raina. So I'm excited, man. <laughs> man I can't wait. <laughs> the whole team is like new. It's so weird. Yeah. This is going to be crazy. I feel like it's going to be amazing, though. You know? Yeah. Same energy, same vibe. Well, so senior year, um, goals, hopes. What are you graduating with? Let's hear it. Like, Let's start off with the degree. What are you get graduating with this year? A sport management degree. Um, I was going to minor in something, but I can't. <laughs> I cannot do it. I was going to minor in coaching, but I'm like, let's just wait. I'm just going to focus on my degree. And yeah, sport management. Okay. And so that actually leads me into a question from Doug Robson. Are, is coaching in your future when you're done? <sighs> For sure. I don't know. Honestly, it's kind of like up and down. I think about yeah. it and then I 
sometimes it's like no because they don't get their summer and I really want my summer <laughs> I know? used to joke with coach Moore I would say uh if I wanted to work your hours I would be a doctor yeah I'm just like uh, I don't know and then I don't know I don't know sometimes <laughs> I look at our coaches and I just like oh I mean I think you'd be really good at it you're always so good at camps but yeah. like I know, you know kids, kids love me but I'm thinking about them older ages you gotta deal with I'm just like ah deal with the attitude yeah I don't know <laughs> like I said this year I'm working on my patience and that's gonna be a big one because I gotta be a leader I'm just telling Coach Key I'm really gotta I gotta buy into it you know I said last year I would do stuff behind the scenes behind you and Erica and Kai but like this year I'm in the forefront so I really gotta lead by example I know I think and I think you and Kai are gonna do an amazing job with that because you guys are just such awesome personalities yeah. and like really strong personalities that are going to really give guys we have a super young squad this year you're going to be able to take a lot of ownership over that and I think it's going to be awesome to see and it's going to go miles on the court when you get to watch right. it you know. so and then goals what are your goals for senior year like all right I let's mean start from summer. let's start for summer summer I hope to pass the yo-yo. That's my main goal all the time. <laughs> Every year of summer, <laughs> that's my goal. And this year, I don't have Aislinn. I'm really mad. I don't have I know. Aislinn. You got to find somebody else to run beside you to pace you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And then when Jada run beside me, she be breathing so heavy. So I'm just like, <laughs> what am I going to do? So, like, I have to – it's got to be the yo-yo for sure. Um, I'm going to have to come back and run it, like, one time with you. Just <laughs> <laughs> The last time when it's really, like, when it's going to count, I need you here for sure. <laughs> I'll start booking my plane tickets. <laughs> um, and then other than that, like going into the season, honestly, I just want to be the best leader I could be. Like that's really my main goal. Uh, you know, yeah. I really don't worry about the uh, my goals by myself alone. I just want to focus on the team, really. Um, I, I hope that we could do another repeat, of course, and then hopefully even a conference one, the regular season. Yeah that also so we need of, one of those we need like just an outright win and I think you yeah. guys can do it this year so that's kind of big and then I want to buy into hopefully this new position coach Moore allows me to play the three hopefully just let's pray on it guys just guard KJ okay no, big guard big guard <laughs> yeah so like I just hope I could buy into that and just get things done in my body really take care of my body this year yeah I mean that's like having gone through it, being able to like maintain like a healthy body is like the yeah. biggest. Like all like, season, job. that's what I need. I need my body to feel good all season. Yeah, we can't have you hurting. You need to be out there every I game need. ready. Yeah, that's why. Hey, I so we have another question from Jay Waller on Twitter. He wants to know: Has anybody tried to change your shooting mechanics? Because he's you have a little bit of a different shot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Honestly, I kind of know the answer to this, but yeah. Um, so I was home the other around Mother's Day weekend, and my uncle he's basically trying to get my shot to where I'm not holding the ball directly in the palm of my hand, and then mm -hmm. I have a little funky spin on it. So he's really trying to get it come off my fingertips and hold my follow through. But other yeah. than that, I could speed it up a little bit for sure, but uh, it's really not much. I think your release is high enough. You don't got to worry about yeah, that. It's really not much about the release. It's kind of just my fingertips, the palm, getting the rotation right. That's kind of the thing I'm really focusing on this summer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as it goes in, who cares? You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and then, okay, so we have the one more question, and it's kind of you are like, uh, you are into shoes I mean I think oh. you I you have so much swag we're always talking about how you always are coming in with the nicest shoes and I know your checks be going to your shoes um and Doug Robson also wants to know how many shoes do you actually own I actually counted before I got on this call because I saw his tweet so I personally counted I have 54 and they're not just basketball shoes. Like, I didn't even count the basketball. I counted my everyday, my heat, my heat shoes. That's all. Like, so which ones are your favorite? Oh, Air Jordan 1s, for sure. They're my favorite. You can kind of wear them with anything. You know, a chill day, a chill fit. Or you can kind of dress it up. Yeah. You can do it, yeah. That's a lot of and what's your, favorite, what's your favorite, like, Adidas basketball shoe that you have to wear? Oh, dang Lillers, Ace. You should know that. I, I know, they're so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, thanks. The ones from my freshman year, though, because they literally had to order me 
extra because I did not like any other shoe. I don't know what, yeah. no, it was these old ones, like the first ones he kind of made, I think. I know exactly which ones you're talking about. The dames are always like my favorite. They're yeah. super comfortable, but kind of light. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. But, you know, like, would you call yourself a sneakerhead? I would. I would. Yeah. I really love shoes. Like, it's to the point where I buy shoes just to make myself happy. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I was just telling Jada the other day, I was like, I think I need to buy another pair of shoes. Because like, I'm just feeling kind of down. So, like, What's the, the most expensive going? pair of shoes you have? How much is have you paid for your most expensive pair? Ace. That's too much information. Let's just say, okay, they can look at them to themselves. Um, the most expensive pair I have are the off-white Air Jordan UNCs. They're light blue. Of course, they're UNC colors. I can't help that, but I love them. <laughs> but I'm just going to say it's supporting Jordan. Right. right. I'm supporting yeah. Jordan, and they're ones. That's my favorite shoe. So it's the off-white Air Jordan uh, UNC ones. Oh, my God. Okay. So, like, like I'm going to just higher or lower than 300 Higher. Hey, I got a pair of Balenciagas. You know they were higher. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm trying to like put in perspective for other people. So like higher or lower than like 700. Hey, so you're going too high. I mean, you're not going too high, but you're just getting too close to the range. <laughs> <laughs> no. hey, I'm going to let it be. They can, they can look it up themselves. They look it up themselves. I'm not going to put you on blast right now. Because <laughs> what? I know my mama's going to look at this. So <laughs> I don't want Mama, to... don't be angry at her. She got swag. <laughs> no, she hates it. She hates my buy shoes 24 7 She's like, Kayla, you do not need that. You have enough. So. Can you ever have enough shoes? No. No, you don't. Because yeah. different ones come out every year. <laughs> different colorways. So. Exactly. And, like, when they become retro, you could sell them, and they could be worth way more. Yeah. But I don't see that being me. Like, I want to be the person who collect them. Like, when I get a home, I want to have a room of shoes I collect. Like, Ty Young. You see her, her closet? Yeah. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> I just look up to her with that. Like, her shoe game goes crazy. Yeah, she does. She got some. She's very stylish. Yeah. I love seeing her on league fits and stuff on Instagram. Yeah, she's tough. But okay, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining me on Off the Court. Um, our next episode is going to drop next Thursday. We have a special edition. It's Welcome to Campus. But KJ, thank you so much. I'm looking so forward to watching you guys play, seeing what you can do, and you got, you thank and Kai you. taking over the team a little bit. Thank you again. I appreciate y'all. Thank you.